Good morning and welcome to day two of College Awareness Week. We are so excited to have you all here. And as people join, we will have this presentation up on my school page and Mr. Burdett as well, so you can get all of this information if you need it later. Um, so many notes you want to take just me for you. Um, we'll always be here to answer your questions. So today we're going to talk about the road to graduation class of 2024. Which sounds like a long way away, but it goes by so fast. So today we're going to think about what you need to do to be prepared for graduation. First off, if there's anything you need related to academics, social emotional learning, thinking about your future career, you can contact me. Well, I'm also very lucky to have Mr. Burdett. We're both here to serve you. I'll be with you for ninth grade, and Mr. Burdett will be with you all the way through high school. Um, so in order to find me, you can send me a message on my email right here. You can call me at the school number, the Google Voice. You can find my Instagram account, and then you all should already be a part of my school office. So you just can find me, just like you would walk into my office or make an email with me at school. You can do the same thing online, and so you just go to your school courses and find my Mistake Baker School Counseling Office. You can find me there. there. So just, just so, so that you are aware of what it means when we share information in the school counseling office, there's a lot of information that is confidential, meaning it's only between me and you. There are some times though when I would have to share what you told me, and those circumstances are listed right here. So what you say stays between us, unless someone's hurting you, you share that you want to hurt someone else, you want to hurt yourself, or you give permission to meet or share with another. So those would be times that I have to involve other people in the school building, um, your parent or guardian, just because my primary concern is making sure you're safe and cared for. And sometimes that, that means other people have to get involved. Sometimes that means that you and I can just have a conversation on it. So you know, these are the situations in which I would need to involve someone else, but that's only because we all want to make sure that you're supported. But this has been a very tough season. All of us have different experiences from the tornado, from the pandemic, from remote learning. Some people might have enjoyed parts of it. Some people might not have enjoyed parts of it. And probably have had some moments where you've been like, like oh, this is nice to be in, but oh man, some are hard. So we're gonna, gonna go through something called box breathing. This is a technique that you can use from home. It's also a technique that you can use at school when we're back in session. It's just a way to calm your body. And so I'm going to pull out a video from my school page. You would be able to find this in your own from home as well. Sure. We're getting that pulled up for you so you can see exactly what it is. Perfect. So you should see my Schoology page now. This is how you would get to. I don't think I played it with sound. <laughs> Just a second. I'm Claire Sharp, and this is Hannah Baker. We're both school counselors in Tennessee. Soy Hannah Baker, y este es Claire Sharp. Nosotros los dos somos consejeros escolares in Tennessee. We want you to prioritize your mental health always. 
Queremos que ustedes uh, prioricen. Okay. We want you to prioritize your mental health always. Queremos que ustedes uh, priorizan su salud mental siempre. But especially in these uncertain times that we are in the coronavirus. Pero especialmente en tiempos como así con la coronavirus. Today we want to share with you a skill to help calm your mind and body called box breathing. Hoy queremos compartir con ustedes una herramienta uh, para calmarse el cuerpo y la mente que se llama la respiración cuadrada. We are going to demonstrate it, so please feel free to join along. Vamos a mostrarla con ustedes. Um, por favor, uh, hágalo con nosotras. It's useful to use a rectangular object when you are doing it. Today we're going to use a book. Es útil usar un objeto um, rectángulo para hacerla. Hoy vamos a usar un libro. Inhale for four. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Otra vez en español. Inhala. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Espera. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Exhala. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Espera. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Thanks for joining along and we hope to see you tomorrow. Gracias por compartir esta herramienta con nosotras y esperamos verles mañana. Adiós. So again, you can use that. Oh, let me stop the feedback real quick. So again, this is something So that's a way that you can calm yourself from home, at school, many options that you have um, while we're working remotely. When we get back to school, you'll have other options like going to my office, talking to Mr. Burdett, going to the restorative center as a calming space. Some other ways that you can calm yourself besides box breathing from home, um, you can take a walk so long as you can socially distance and wear masks where it's required. Try listening to calming music. The type of music we listen to really does matter for what's calming, what will slow um, your mind and body down. Try taking a social media break. You can make a cup of tea. Call someone that you miss seeing and speak to them. Take a shower, or splash water in your face. And then you can also contact me using any of the ways that we talked about at the beginning if these strategies aren't working for you. And that's what I'm here for to help you find one that does. So today, we're going to talk about some ways that you can determine if you're being academically successful in school in a way that will help you be prepared for graduation. So in all of your classes, you need a 70% or higher to pass and earn what's called a credit. If you get a 69 or below, you have to retake the class. That's different from middle school where you just keep moving on and moving on. 
If you don't pass a class in high school, you have to retake it. And usually it is harder to do so online using a program called Edgenuity than it is to do so online with your teachers right now. So we really want you to make sure you're putting all the effort in right now, reaching out to us if you need help, take advantage of your teacher's office hours, because this is the best way to learn and pass the class. So GPA stands for grade point average, and it's a way that both high schools and colleges and employers measure academic achievement while you're in high school. So it's a value that correlates with your grade. So if you look at the box below, if you get a 93 to 100, that's an A, which transfers to four points as your GPA. A B is three points, a C is worth two points, a D is worth one point, and an F, since you didn't pass the class, is worth zero points. So we're going to see what that means for actually calculating your GPA. Here we go, it's back. So hopefully that video helped you understand how to calculate your GPA. If you have questions, we will look at it moving forward. Right now, you don't actually have a GPA. This would just be if you were looking at your current grade, you use this method to calculate it. You would have an idea of what it would be if your grades don't change before um, you get your first report card. So you have until right before fall break to bring your grades up as much as you can. Again, reach out to us if you have questions or need help with how you can bring your grade up. Your teachers are gonna be a great uh, person to ask um, for help as well, because they're the ones that are grading your work and know how you're doing in class the most. So GPA will play a big role in college decisions, in your future employer, because that lets them know how hard did this student work in school and how difficult of classes did they take? So our goal for you is a 3.0 or higher. 3.0 is the threshold where students start to get scholarships in college usually, um, and it makes employers look at you and be like, okay, they worked hard. I would like a hard worker to work for me. So that is a student that I'm interested in hiring after they graduate. 
We're also going to talk a little bit about the specific credits you need to graduate. Our goal is for you to graduate on time in 2024. So in order to do that, you need 28 credits. Of those credits, there are specific classes you have to pass. It's not just 28 credits of whatever class you want. It's 28 specific classes. So as you see on the screen, in white is where you can see the classes you need to graduate. In the greenish aqua color are the classes that you're taking this year for ninth grade that meet the graduation requirements. So to graduate, you need four credits of English. So this year you're most likely taking English 1 or ELD 9. You need four credits of math. So right now you're either taking Integrated Math 1 or 2 if you took it Integrated Math 1 in eighth grade. You need three science credits. So for this year, you're either taking environmental science or agri-science. Those both count as your ninth grade level science class. So does physical science. So if you took that in eighth grade, you're in biology right now. You also need three and a half social studies credits. So this year, you're either taking world history or AP human geography for those credits. You need a half credit of PE, and I know many of you are looking forward to that class. That is a 10th grade class at Glencliff, so you'll have it next year. You also need one wellness credit. So that's why you're enrolled in lifetime wellness this year. You need one fine art. You need two credits of foreign language in the same language. So for example, you need Spanish one and Spanish two. You couldn't take Spanish one and French one. That wouldn't count. You need three CTE electives. So this, this is when you hear people talking about your academy and your pathway classes at Glencliff, when you're thinking if you want to do automotive, if you want to do engineering, if you want to do health sciences. And we're going to talk more about that as we get into the spring semester when you choose your 10th grade pathway. The last five and a half are electives. So these are classes that you generally will get to choose so long as you have passed all the other classes that are required. So right now, your elective class for this year is either freshman seminar or AVID. In the future, this is when you'll have the opportunity to take things like journalism or study African American history or join the peace team and really just dig into your interests and think, what do I really want to study and learn about? Um, so it matters what classes you are in to earn the credits. If you don't pass, you must retake the class. And sometimes at our school, that means you have to take the same class again with the same teacher. So if you're having difficulties with a class with a specific teacher, please speak to us because our goal is for you to take each class one time and be successful and keep moving forward. So again, each class gives you one credit. Each year you can earn eight credits. So right now you're enrolled in four classes. So this, this year, this semester, but before December, we're hoping you get four of your eight credits. In the spring, you'll get the other four, so long as you pass all of your classes. So credits are assigned a half credit each quarter. This means you'll have two full credits by the end of the first quarter of ninth grade. And again, that ends coming up here in fall break. So when we leave for fall break, you will have had the opportunity to earn your first two credits of high school. An example, if you pass your English class first quarter, you get half a credit. If you also pass it second quarter, you will have one full credit and you will be done with English one. If you fail first quarter, but pass the second quarter, you have makeup work to do. That means you got zero credit for first quarter and half a credit for second quarter. That means you have to go to summer school to make up that half credit. The only other way that you can get your full credit if you fail the first quarter and pass the second quarter is if you do what we call a grade average to get credit for both. So since the score of a 70 is passing, if your score from first quarter and your score from second quarter is a 139 or higher, you get credit for both even if you failed the first quarter. So for example, if you look at your class and you're like, oh man, I have a 63 in my English class, you can get a 78 next quarter. That equals 141. Since that's higher than 139, and 141 divided by two is a 70.5, which means overall you have a 70.5 for both quarters, which is the passing grade. That means you get credit for both. 
However, if when you add those two numbers together, it's less than 139, you got to retake that other quarter to get credit. So do your best to make sure you get credit and have a grade of 70 or higher all the time. Then you don't ever have to worry about whether you have your full credit. So that's a lot of information. This will be posted to my Schoology account. Myself, Mr. Burdett, and your Freshman Academy team are here to support you. We are so glad you are at Glencliff. We're so excited for the day we get to meet you in person. So again, this is your team who's going to be with you for all of this year. Mr. Hamnett, your Academy Principal. Myself, Ms. Baker, your School Counselor. Mr. Cook is your lead teacher. Mr. Burdett is your gear up coordinator, and he's the one of these people who will be with you all the way through high school. You've got deans depending on your last name. Mr. Staggs has got A through C. Dean Majors has D through M. Ms. Andrews has N through Z. And Ms. Davis is your academy coach, and she will really be helping us once we get looking into your pathway classes later this year. I'm going to have our contact information. You'll be able to find this on our page should you need to email any of us. If you have questions, please send them to myself or Mr. Burdett. If you go onto my Schoology page, you have a closing assignment to fill out a survey from today. And for those who would like to hear this presentation in Spanish, we will be getting started with the new link in about five minutes. Entonces, si prefiere escoger a uh, la presentación en español, necesita ir a mi página de Schoology o a su calendario de Schoology y haga clic en la presentación en español. Gracias por todo. Don't forget to fill out the survey on my page that is marked as an assignment.